So welcome folks. I want to describe some of the main properties of cosets. So G is a group and H is a subgroup. And for an element little a in the group, we're going to define the left coset AH as all things of the form um, A times little h, where little h is in our subgroup. So this is the same definition you've seen in the prior videos. I just replaced little uh, g with little a, I believe. So here are some important properties. For any two elements, A and B in our group, we have the following properties. First of all, A is in its own coset, AH. Okay, and why is this? Maybe I'll put my explanations in blue. This is just because you can write A as A times the identity. And A times the identity is clearly something of this form that's in the coset because the identity is always in any subgroup, capital H. So since an element's always in its own coset, that means if you look at all of the cosets, all of the cosets for a group contain every element in the group, just because each each element is in its own coset. All right. So the next important property is either two cosets are equal or they have no elements in common, which you could write by saying that their intersection is empty. The intersection has no elements in it. So in other words, i.e., um, two cosets are either equal or disjoint. Disjoint means they have no, no elements in common. So we won't go through the proof of that together right now, but you could see it here in this picture, right? The coset zero plus H is equal to the coset three plus H, which is equal to the coset six plus H. And the coset one plus H is equal to the coset four plus H, etc. But when two cosets are not equal, like this red coset is not equal to this blue coset, then they have no elements in common. There's no um, intersection between them. And then the last important property is that um, the size of any two cosets is equal. So this left coset by A has the same size as this left coset by B. And, and both of these sizes are just equal to the size of the subgroup, right? which I guess is a coset on its own right. You know, that's the identity times H. The, the, the subgroup H is the left coset by the identity, if you, if you like. Okay. So I think there might be a mistake on your notes or what you wrote. Yeah, help me up. Um, so I think you said the intersection between the two, two cosets should be zero. It shouldn't, or shouldn't it, it should be zero. It should not be zero, right? Yes, you're correct. Yeah, so I made a mistake here. This should be equal. So let me put this. And red. I appreciate that. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, either two cosets are equal or they're disjoint. They have no elements in common. So, so how would you prove that two cosets always have the same size and that their size is the, the same as the size of H? You know, this would you'd prove this using the cancellation law. So H has whatever size it has. And then when you multiply each element of H by some element little a on the left, you actually just get the same number of elements out because you can't have any collapsing. Because if you had collapsing, if a times one element was equal to a times another element, then by the cancellation law, they'd have to be the same, right? If a times H1 were equal to a times H2, that would imply that H1 were equal to H2. But that's because, if we chose, 
Is that because yeah. of the function being one to one? Yeah. So this this sort of think of this as a map. We're mapping from H to the coset A H by multiplying by A. And exactly that that map is one to one. It doesn't collapse the size at all. So let me just show you a picture of this. We saw this here. You know, our subgroup H had size four. And then when you translate the subgroup, say by adding one, you know, you still get a, a subgroup of size four. There's just no um, overlaps. And another way of saying that is that, you know, when you apply this element A on the left, um, that map from, um, from the group, from um, that map from a subgroup onto a coset is injected or one to one. Okay, so in summary, these are the three main properties of cosets. An element is always in its coset because you could just multiply it by the identity for little h. Two cosets are either equal or disjoint. They have no elements in common. And we didn't prove that, but we saw the picture for it on an example. And then finally, a coset always has the same size as the size of the group H. Um, and, and this you can prove using the cancellation law. So these are the only th three properties that we'll need to prove Lagrange's theorem in the next video, which says that the size of a, a subgroup always divides evenly into the size of a finite group. Public questions. Thank you.